Hey, it's it's been a while. I haven't been able to post uh, in quite a while because the past two weeks have been pretty crazy, specifically the last week. But today's video is very exciting. I'm going to be doing a sketchbook spread video because in my previous video, I got a request asking for a sketchbook spread kind of thing, like the ones Drawing with Waffles does. This video isn't just the first sketchbook spread video on my channel, it's also going to be an Arctober video. Arctober is kind of like Inktober, except you can use any art medium, which is why I'm doing it. I don't like limiting myself to just inking because I love colors too much, but to be honest, my inking could use some improvement. Anyways, for the spread, which I've already completely finished, I'm using an artist on Instagram's prompt list for Arctober. It's called the Eventober 2020 prompt list. And it's by the artist on Instagram, Even Sketches. I really loved her prompt list. I felt it was really like fun. And I loved how it was based off, like it was based on character and creature design. Now, I didn't just draw one prompt in today's video. I actually combined three days together from uh, the Eventober prompt list. Those three days were day two, day three, and day four. And the prompts were skull, which I made into an eagle skull because I like eagles. I was going to do a crow skull, but then my sister told me that she likes eagles better. And then the second prompt was traveler or no, wait. Day three prompt was misdirection and the day four prompt was traveler. I really like those three prompts together and I, I'm actually pretty happy with how these pages turned out. One thing I do want to mention though is that I don't think I'll be able to handle another video like this one because I basically did two fully colored like pages in my sketchbook and I had to film it all and like it was just a little too much. I, I felt myself get a little bit burnt out by the end of it. So for sure, next time I do one of these kind of videos, I don't know if it'll be Arctober related or not. Like, I don't know if I'll make another Arctober themed video. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. But next time I do a sketchbook spread video, I'll definitely keep the left page or the right page, whichever I choose to be like just sketches with a little bit of color composition planning. But I definitely don't want to do the whole like fully colored spread. I like how it turned out. Like I was really happy with the outcome. I'm not complaining or saying like it looks bad or anything. <laughs> I'm just saying it took way too much effort and that's the main reason today's video is late. It just it was just too long and like too ambitious, I guess, to finish in one weekend. But um another thing I wanted to talk about in this video was my process. So I've been getting quite a few comments asking for tutorials about specific things. I don't think I can do tutorials. Something I can do instead of tutorials at this point in my art experience would be talking about my process because it's a lot less like instructive and it's more like, oh, here's what I did and here's what I shouldn't do next time and that sort of thing. So today's process, I started off with um, a scarlet color race pencil. I chose scarlet because it contrasts a bit with the green, but it also like blends into all of the browns being used. Gouache goes over color race pencil really easily. I don't recommend using graphite and then going over with gouache immediately afterwards. If you're using a graphite pencil, it's still possible to use gouache, like, uh, but I would recommend erasing it with a kneaded eraser and then going over that with gouache. It will be a little bit trickier though because the lines will fade. But uh, if you just use graphite and for example, go over the graphite with a bright color like yellow or or like, yeah, pretty much just yellow. <laughs> It'll get you a really muddy color. So if that's not like your intent, if you don't want your art to look um, like blackish yellow, I wouldn't really suggest using graphite and just going over it immediately with gouache. Also, I forgot to mention for the sketching part, I used a bunch of reference photos from Pinterest and I'll put them all on the screen right now, just so then it's clear what I was going for. I think at this point I started painting, probably. <laughs> I should probably like watch my footage while doing these voiceovers, but it's okay. My process with gouache is usually to do like a really light colored wash 
and then worry about adding the colors on top of it. So what I did for the skull, for example, was I just used a very watered down beige color. And then I went in with a thicker beige. And most of the time with gouache, I go too dark, which is totally fine because you can layer lights on top of darks. That's the, one of the good parts about gouache. And so I can't really say if I go light to dark or dark to light because most of the time it's just a mix of everything. Honestly, with gouache, I would advise to just jump right into it and like make mistakes put random colors here and there. That's what I did, to be honest. Like, I don't really have a, I don't really have like a plan in my head for when starting a painting. Anyways, in this portion of the video, I'm basically gonna be voiceovering while looking at the footage. So I actually know what I'm talking about. Uh, I made the sketch for this, uh, for this second painting using the same pencil, the same color. I had a little bit of an issue with like the posing. Um, I probably should have planned that out instead of painting everything on the first page and just making it look aesthetically pleasing, I guess. I inked it in the footage right here because I thought I was going to do it with watercolors. As you could see, like the palette just like flashed by. <laughs> I decided to go with gouache though because it matches a little better with the other page. Watercolors are quicker though, so <laughs> it would have taken me much less time if I did it with watercolors. One thing I kind of wish I did was go over with watercolors and then layer on top of gouache because that way it would tie the entire piece together. I'm not really good at um, tying the piece together with gouache and making the colors match. With watercolors it's much easier because I just shade everything with the same color without lifting the layers underneath and then I also use the same color for all the lighting. With gouache you kind of have to like color pick. Does that make sense? <laughs> Anyways, um, I decided to go over with watercolor for that exact purpose, just to make everything in the same family of colors, kind of. I'm really bad at explaining. I hope it kind of makes sense though, because if you see here, I go over with the watercolors, my head's showing, but I go over with uh, the shadows with this like uh, dark turquoise-ish color, as well as a purple color that comes up in a moment. but. These shadows and like the, the tones that I put everywhere, they really like bring the piece together. Also, uh, I lighten it up with gouache. The advantage of gouache is that you could go over dark colors with light and basically brighten the piece again. Uh, so that's what I'm doing right here. I'm just adding highlights to the watercolors. You can't really do that with watercolors. With watercolors, you have to be careful where you put the darks and where you put the lights. That's why I really love gouache. It's really, it's a lot more forgiving than watercolors, but it also has an ugly stage for a really long time. So with this painting, I was going to give up on it at least a thousand times because the ugly phase lasted quite a while, but thankfully I didn't. Like there was actually a night where I was like thinking about how awful the painting was and how I was going to have to scrap the entire video. And then I woke up the next day, which is this footage right here. And I was like, oh, it's actually not that bad. It just needs a bit more like highlights and yellow stuff. So yeah, that's what I'm doing here. And I'm adding some lines. I kind of wish I didn't use a pen. I wish I used a black colored pencil because off camera before, well, like after this peeling part, I go in with a black pencil and I line the like the little hill thingy, the path. I line the path and the trees and a bunch of other stuff with a black pencil and it really helped like define things without being pitch black. Anyways, so I'm just peeling the paper now and, sorry, not peeling the paper. Well, actually peeling the paper, that's accurate. <laughs> I'm peeling the paper and the tape now. Washi tape kind of destroyed the paper because I applied the washi tape so many times and peeled it off, but I fixed those parts and um, that's, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you like the new voiceover kind of style. Uh, where I talk about my process a lot more. And I'll see you most likely in two weeks. I highly doubt I'll have a video ready in one week from now since I have a midterm next week. Thank you so much for watching this far and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.